Welcome everyone to Paranormal Roundtable. My name is Josh Turner, also known as Wolf, and with me as always is Banjo, my little dog. Yes. What's up? Oh yeah, oh yeah, Sal's here too. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. yeah. Sal Capone. I here. forgot about you. Sorry. <laughs> my little dog's right here with me. What are you doing, buddy? Yeah, he's... Huh? What are you doing? He's been hanging around by your feet earlier. I was feeding him earlier. That's why From he your says feet? food. He wanted your, your food. Your feet smell like food? No, actually, the, <laughs> the almonds I was eating. But almonds, you're not giving the dog almonds, are you? Oh, no, they can eat them. Not I too much. I hear that if you give them almonds, they turn into werewolves, dude. you got a problem on your hands because I'll be going home oh, tonight. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's already happening. Oh, I'm just kidding. Um, just, I had to preface it. I had to say just kidding just so the fans at home wouldn't be like, oh, my gosh, he died on the air. Just kidding, guys. Once again, you're not that stupid. Just kidding about that, too. Dead guy. And we just keep saying we're just kidding. <laughs> Say all kinds of horrible things and say you're just kidding. That's oh, yeah, works. you know. That's what works. Keeps you out of trouble. Oh, yeah. I used to do that in school. I'd tell my teacher, you're a big fat, you know, and mm-hmm. then I'd be like, I was just kidding, and then I'd still get spanked. Because, <laughs> see, when we were kids, it was corporal punishment. We don't have that no more. That is a big Unfortunate. problem that when you look at it for what it is, I mean, it, it could... It, it could prevent a lot of what goes mm-hmm. on today. If if it was exercised at home, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, hey, that's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, does you opinion. always have the moms that would be up there defending their, my kid didn't do nothing. There's a neck, the knife sticking out of the neck of another kid. Mm-hmm. That kid stuck the knife in the, with my kid's hand. Yeah, what is it? That's not my angel that did that. Yeah, my <laughs> kid know. didn't do nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, uh, Banjo was... Okay, you're gonna have to go. He's yeah, right. Banjo's. Uh, get, get he's down, just buddy. being an. Down, he's being an incorrigible child. Yeah, he's right being now. unruly. He's being <laughs> unruly. Uh, so, anyways, it, we 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 were uh, last episode. I don't remember what we talked about. I'm not gonna get into it because who knows how we're doing this. Yeah, the episodes just come out, but they today come out, and today we're gonna talk about Bigfoot, Bunyan, Sasquatch. Oh no, okay, Big Bigfoot. Definitely. I mean, because let's I think we were going to talk this, about your bunions you know? that, that my dog keeps going towards. I don't even know what bunions are. No, on your feet. What, what I'm are... actually just messing with you, dude. Your, <laughs> your feet are not. They, they, they look. You, you, your whole body is quite weird and hideous. Yes, it is. Okay, so it's the feet just... are not any different than the rest of you. I'm oh, not yeah, going to say it, that they're they, grotesque. They are, they are the synchronized to the rest of me, right? <laughs> They are synchronized. They are in sync. You know what, though? I'll be honest. Sal, you're not a bad looking guy. I think when you were younger, you know. Yeah, you know, I kind of resembled Frankenstein. Yeah, if so, I was if I was like twenty years younger and a lot gayer, I might have gone for you. You know, if I was a lot gayer though, but I'm not. Is, you're not gay in any way. I'm that's, not. That's, I'm that's, not. That's a, yeah. that's the problem. Sorry, yeah, I'm man. Not gay. Sorry. Yeah, so not, we would never. Not gay in any way. I'm, I'm I'm just thinking though. You're not a bad looking guy. I'm yeah. just messing with you. In uh, comparison folks, to the he dog is, man. he is very hideous. Actually, yes, He's horribly burned about the face, breast, chest, neck, and head. Area. Yes. Third degree burns, I might add. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways, we got some comments from episode six. We got, this says here, Bonnie Anderson it says, Over the years, my experience have been many. Thank you for bringing my creepify level way up. Thanks, guys. I am thankful I live in a city. Well, it was farmland, but not anymore. I am wondering if I will be sleeping tonight. That was from episode six. And then this guy, Brian Lang, says, Love the show, guys. You guys and DDoS rock. And then love for the king. Mike Tyson punch out was awesome. It was an only one player game, though. Your small fighter was faced away and the opponent was faced towards you, controlled by the computer. I know what he's talking about because that was the big. F- this is That's going to lead into what we're going to talk about today. Oh, yeah. Because that was the game that everybody was playing. Yeah. When at the party that I was at when we, we were kids, that we saw the Bigfoot. Well, I didn't see the Bigfoot, but the kids. Also Everybody else it. saw it, but you. Right? Yes, I didn't see it. Hey, so. that that game was the you know that that was the bomb when it first came out. I mean, that was huge. And then, of course, you know, they already had Punch Out in an arcade version, a big you know the big tall consoles. Mm-hmm. When it came out, they already had punch out but then when mike tyson was champ yeah it became yeah, mike tyson's punch out and then exactly. super macho man uh became the second guy before tyson. mike tyson yeah because yeah, yeah. it was much super super macho man and then then if you were you if you play regular punch out i believe it was super, super macho, macho man, man was the was the was top the final one. guy yeah. but he was easier to beat even in the even on the console he was easier to 
easier Tyson to beat than Tyson on yeah. I was, beat him though. I beat Tyson. You, you beat Tyson yeah. in that punch out. Yeah, I did finally. Because I mean, they say what? It's like Castlevania though. I never did beat that man. That game. Me, me, and my <laughs> friend Keith played that game for hours. We never could get through it, dude. Death was ridiculous. We actually came to the conclusion that death you couldn't defeat him because it was death. So we just figured, you know what? You can't beat it. So there is no Dracula after this. It's just you just lose to death. So we just gave up thinking that that's what it was. Because back then, guys, we didn't have the game guides, you know, to go and read all that. And if we did, we lived in a small town. We'd have to go to, like, Austin to, to, to do it, you know. And then we didn't have a computer where you could jump on there and find out about all the levels. So uh, us two hillbilly kids just figured that's it. You can't beat death because it's death, and that's it. In Castlevania, we never did beat it. You just left it alone. We just left it alone after an entire night of trying to beat it and not sleeping. We just gave up. That's nuts, man. Yeah, that's nuts. Our, our, our email address is doswolfman88 at gmail.com and wolfandsal at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Definitely. Send us your stories. We want to hear them, folks. Yeah, send us your stories and send us your, your, your kind words, your kind comments. And um, Thank if, you all, by the way. If you troll us and attack us on the comment section... Apparently, we have like an army of people that will jump on there and defend us. Well, I'm thankful for that. I have noticed that. I am thankful for that. Well, I have definitely noticed that. There are a few people on there that are vicious supporters of us. You know, the unfortunate reality is we're always going to have some people. Haters. Yeah, the haters is the, is the, to use the common vernacular of today, the haters. And we're not here to urinate in anyone's coffee or anything like that. <laughs> We're just oh, here to I do am. what we I'm, do. I am. I'm here for that. You know, you're here for that? You're, Heck yeah. You're only here for the beer? That I'm, kind of thing? I'm here to pee in the beer and the coffee, whatever. <laughs> okay. Drop rat turds in it when you're not looking. Mm. You're drinking something right now. Oh, but it's I think, I think Banjo had did something to that. Uh, Banjo, you are quite you? the vintage. <laughs> I just like coffee, and I'm here to talk about Bigfoot Bigfoot today. today. Yeah, Bigfoot or something something along, along those lines. Um, how, about, how about a Bigfoot? Car- carrying a dog, because that's what happened. Really? Mm-hmm. Where these guys these? were th- these? There's two stories I got about them. One, one in particular, uh, there were some guys that were out hunting yeah. in Missouri, and near the Ozarks, I guess in the Ozarks, what they said. And they, they must have been in really was, southern Missouri, or they were they were in southern Missouri, I believe, wherever yes. the yeah the Ozarks is a pretty good mountain range. So yes, I think I it's you. I think that and Arkansas are where they're at. Yeah, right? yeah, in Missouri. But these I, guys said that yeah. Missouri, and I and I read the story to the guy sent me. It was carrying a dead dog, a a what they could only describe as a Sasquatch. Really, reddish hair, fur. Auburn, yeah. The face was, well, I don't know about Auburn. Well, no, no, that's that's basically what a reddish brown is, is an Auburn. Well, I didn't say reddish brown, I said red. Red? This thing had literally dyed its hair like Ronald McDonald and was, was walking around. That's a serious Sasquatch. Yeah, that was a serious Sasquatch. He's very <laughs> serious. He was like He was like there to, you know, advertise Happy Meals. Yeah, he's with it, like yeah. today's youth. But in China, that's why he had the dog. Oh, there you go. And then it, or he was a UFC fighter. Yeah, could dye his hair red, or yeah. like these Latinas that like to dye their hair like red, but it comes out looking like red, red. Yeah, red, red. Like, I'm just, but folks, we're, we're in not, all I'm, seriousness. I digress. Yeah. Like, no, th- this guy, this Bigfoot that they saw was red hair, not like red, like we're. I'm jokingly saying. Right. Like you said. Yeah, the yeah, Auburn. The, the, yeah, the, the reddish. Brown, it was had to have been yeah. reddish brown. Reddish brownish. But actually, they didn't write that. They didn't say it was reddish brown. They said it was red. So but we're I'm only assuming that we're it was. We're speculating on the exact tone yeah. of the color. And we're okay. not making fun of your encounter, guys. No, we're um, not. We're just, these guys were out hunting, and this thing came out of the out of the, the brush, and it was carrying a dead dog. It makes you wonder, did it hunt it down, or, did, or was it, quote unquote, roadkill that they picked up? I don't know. They just said it was a dog. A, a light brown dog. Mm. And they said that the encounter was brief, but that it stood there and it stared at them. Oh, it saw them. They, oh, yeah. And oh. it stood there and it looked at them. And then it, it was weird because the guy said that, that it kind of looked down at the dog that it was holding and then looked up at them. And like, I don't know, maybe. Like, maybe Hope this wasn't your dog. <laughs> yeah, that was what was weird. I was thinking like, what was he thinking? Like, was he thinking that maybe I killed your dog or something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was pretty messed up. I, I kind of was like, I felt sick when I heard, when I read it, I felt kind of sad because I love dogs, but 
I do too. It happens. Sasquatches are not pets and they're wild beasts. And I believe them and dog man will murder your pets and, and eat them and eat them. And, and realistically, when you think about it, if we as humans were in a situation where we were hunting something to eat and there was a dog there and there was nothing else, I hate to break it to you folks, but, uh, it's on, it's on the menu. It's on the menu. Yes. And it, it's just the way it is. It's the circle of life. It's cycle of life. Okay. You eating dogs is a cycle of life. That's. Hey, I've, I've tasted some when I was stationed you're, in South you're Korea. Disgusting, dude. Okay. But go. It's, it, excuse folks, me, you're hearing eat. this. You're hearing this savage. Okay. <laughs> this is what you get. This is what you get. Okay. Excuse me. There are people who eat horses. This is what our. Dude, I'm not one of them. You can eat all those live, those, those I don't eat horses. pets That's... and whatever you want to. That's weird. But anyways, that was messed up. I'll give you the description of it. He said that it had a, a, a brow ridge that was protruding. The face had no hair on it. The face was, was pretty much hairless. Interesting. And the hair was all red. And it was hair. I mean, it wasn't a fur or anything right. like that. Because I, I corresponded back and forth. And that it was a, the face, and it had really big lips and a flat nose, like very flat and, and pushed up nose. Mm -hmm. And that the jaw protruded outward. And that's a description of what they said. And they said it wasn't overly huge, but it was about seven foot. Okay. I've heard of Bigfoot being a lot bigger than that. And it was a reddish color. He must, if, if it was seven foot, I would guess that they saw a juvenile. Maybe. Something to the equivalent of a uh, unless 13, in, in the Missouri in the Missouri version of the Ozarks they get that big and that's just what they have. I have no freaking clue. Well, yeah, and also uh, depending on whether it was male or female, I don't think they they didn't uh, discuss no, that. No, they did not discuss that because I think the dimorphism between the males and females, I think it exists within the Sasquatch world as well. Yeah, I think that they have human-like breasts. That's mm -hmm. what I hear a lot. Yeah. I mean, I don't... And the differences in sizes, i.e. the dimorphism, mm -hmm. you know. And so if it was male and it was about seven foot tall, I'm, I'm saying it's still a youngster, i.e. a teenager, a younger teenager. Mm -hmm. Because once they're full grown, the average height that people talk about and report... As far as the males are in the South, they report them at eight feet tall. The males, good sized, of course. And, and of course, you know, maturity, once they get more mature, you get more size on you. So if they was still, if it was kind of slender and not really, you know, something that resembles uh, uh, a Mack truck, <laughs> for lack of better words, then yeah, I would say it was young. It's a youngster. But still, that that's still scary. A youngster at that age, seven feet tall and... Carrying a dog around like nothing. That's scary. Yeah. So what was the next one, brother? Well, and also I was going to say the dog that, that didn't appear to be a humongous dog. It was a medium-sized dog. So oh, it wasn't okay. like it was carrying some monster. Maybe something like a, like a small Labrador retriever? I have no idea. Oh. I didn't they ask. Didn't, the, the, okay. they just, they didn't, he, the guy didn't know. But they just didn't say it was big, though. That was a medium-sized dog. That's I mean, it? You know, I, I don't know. I mean... We'll leave it at that. All right. So. Yeah, it's, and that takes me to my next story. The next story was about a, a Sasquatch that was carrying something else. And this happened in Louisiana. Oh. In southern Louisiana, these guys were checking. Uh, they were checking um, a trout line, trout yeah. line, trout lines, whatever. They or were checking jug them. lines, as yeah, some people like to. Some people like and, them. And so they were, and they saw this Sasquatch walking along the shore or the banks, whatever. Mm hmm. And there was a trail right there, and one of them had gone up to that point where the trail began. Right. And they look down the trail, and they see this uh, Sasquatch carrying a what looked to be a juvenile gator. Oh. So it had actually killed. Yeah, hunted down and killed a gator. Mm -hmm. Well, in Louisiana, a Sasquatch with a gator doesn't sound too far-fetched mm -hmm. because they are all over the place. And there's a Sasquatch out there everywhere, too. I hear a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, what is it? They have the area down there called the Honey the, Island. Honey Island, yeah. That that place is is Honey supposedly a big monster. hot spot. Yeah, the the color and the description of this one. Now, this one was a little bigger. It was about seven and a half to eight feet tall. Oh, and that this thing had a uh, dark brown fur, almost chocolate color, mm. and that it was it was definitely carrying a a, a gator. 
Dad, and then it stopped and kind of looked back at them when their boat kind of hit the the shore. Mm -hmm. And then they both looked at each other and they got the boat and <laughs> went went back out into the water. And it just kind of kept staring at them. Um, so that it was humongous, it had humongous barrel, broad chest, giant, wow. thick arms, long arms. Can you imagine long from, legs? The way you're making this sound, and this is what I'm imagining that from tip to tip on the shoulders, you're looking at four feet wide. I have no idea how wide. I just know that they said that it was humongous. Well, you know what? I did actually ask the guys, like the trail. He said that that, that this thing covered the whole trail. How big a trail was this? You know, and the guy said you could probably lay down across sideways. Yeah, so I guess that would be about six feet. This wide. thing was six foot wide. About six. Wow. That's that's incredible. That's a massive. Yeah, creature. That, that must be a very. So yeah, I would say that you're you know about a four it, foot from tip of tip. Could probably shoulder. be five five you know four to four and a half five feet. <sighs> that's that's a si basically the, for lack of better words that's the size of a Mack truck. You know, yeah, that's in a terms big that's a big dude, man. Yeah, I mean, and so big boy. That that was that story, you know, and these guys that they they claim they saw it and they said a distance, uh, the skin they didn't really see that that was completely covered in fur, right. Um, the eyes that was broad daylight, they didn't, they didn't notice anything weird about the eyes. You know what I've been wondering though, for, for some of these folks that see them in places like the swampy places like Louisiana, mm -hmm. Florida, it makes you wonder, do they get, do, does their hair get thicker down there? Because you know, they got to deal with the mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Does their hair get thicker to help protect them from the mosquitoes or, or, or do they do something different? Or something else, do they have another strategy to combat all the mosquitoes that are floating around in the deep, deep swamps? Does that make sense? Because, you know, we, for us, guys that have been in the military, we've done a few things, been around, we don't have any type of bug spray out in, out in the woods. Well, you know, we used to eat match heads. Why? Because it has sulfur, and then it comes through your pores, and it keeps the, keeps them off of you to a good to a good degree. Because sulfur is actually good for you. Yeah. But uh, you eat those match heads to keep all that floating through, and it helps keep the mosquitoes as long off. As long as you so. don't eat too many. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, that sounds really interesting. And there's another question with that one, brother. Makes you wonder, if it was this big that it covers up the trail, can you imagine how big that gator was if it looked like a medium-sized gator? Mm -hmm. It had to have been a good-sized um, gator They said it looked like us. a juvenile gator. Really? Yeah, it was just carrying it with one arm, just walking. Kind of like a... Like a Maybe like a bag or something. Yeah. Then they, they did say that the hands um, did not have the, the fur. Right. That it looked like, from what they could tell, the hands, the feet, and the face were not covered in fur. Or hair, I should say. Right. I bet you they're callus-covered hands, though, that's for sure. And and the the face, it, they were, it was too far to get any real details. That's On why. the face. Yeah, and they didn't jump out of the boat and go, hey, let me get a good look at you. They I wouldn't just either. Got back in their boat and got the heck out of there because they don't want to have to deal with this no. angry Sasquatch that's going to be mad now that you're messing with it. Because, you know, we've said it before, the Sasquatch down here. They've got an they, attitude. They got an attitude. They're very cantankerous. They're not, they don't want to be messed with and they're not, mm -hmm. they're not going to play games, dude. Yeah, they're not um, the friendly, they're not the, 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 not Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah, definitely not the Harry and the Hendersons. Not down here. Now, now on the, on the same vein, Okay. Okay. The this guy got me in touch with another guy who oh, lives nice. near that same area down the bayou. Oh. Uh, and and he was picked, you know, check checking for what his what he does down there. And I believe that he hunts gators. Oh, okay. And uh he was checking to see if his, his there lines. was any of his prey out mm -hmm. there that he was going well they shoot him, I believe. Right. I know they also set traps for him. Traps too. and he was checking them and then he was going to kill him or whatever. Whatever he does. Yeah. And this guy corresponded with me. That he actually had a female Bigfoot that oh. he called the female that was actually stealing fish, and it was a pretty regular thing. And like <laughs> a buddy of his was running those trot lines, and that that it was going, and it was catch checking the. the and one day it they would went check out the there, for and, and it, that his buddy, okay. Uh -huh. Now this the guy that told me this story was the buddy of the ones that saw the Bigfoot carry Correct. the gator. Right. He didn't actually. Now this guy didn't actually see it, but he but a, a buddy of his that did check. Trout lines, you know, had gone out there and had seen this thing stealing fish, right? Now he tells me that this this guy says, "I got this uh, female Bigfoot that's always robbing my trout lines." Well, this guy that was doing the gator hunting said, "Sometimes I'll check my my stuff and it'll be robbed." Yeah, 
And he said it's probably because it was in the same area. It's probably that female. He said it's probably the female. Now you could think man, maybe a gator's coming along and taking the fish. That does happen as well. Yeah, but he said that it looked very meticulous, like they're being pulled off, and so he saw it happen. Yeah, like literally saw it happen. So this guy said you could be getting robbed by the same animals mm -hmm. that were, you know. So he went out there one day and was checking for his whatever, and his buddy said right there in the in the in the bush. He goes, if you look real close, you could see them. They're hiding right there. There was two of them. And they both looked like females, um, according to this guy. Hmm. So I don't know. No. He said that they that he actually saw the breasts and everything. They were a reddish brown color again. Wow, you know, darker, br more brown than red. Because I asked him, you know, and and uh, he did not get close enough to get like real any no real, real detail, details. But he yeah. saw him kind of hiding in the brush, and that guy that 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 buddy that was with buddy him that's always checking his fish lines said yeah. that, that that's them. That's the one stealing They're the, the fish. The one stealing his fish, you know, and he said that he was gonna deal with them. Well, the guy that was the gator hunter said, "Don't do that. Don't you know, leave him don't, alone. Let let him have what you know, whatever." And he said that you know he had a suspicion that something was 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 taking those gators. Now, man, in that same area, you know, you got that guy that 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 had said that he was having issues, you know, that and that. The guy was walking. He, he there or that pulled his boat up, and he saw the gate. The one walking with the gator. Yeah, walking the trail. Yeah. So I mean, you know, what it, it, it's all in the same area. It's all relative. You know, it sounds like uh, it sounds like they're dealing with a little family troop around. That's there. what I think. And but I, what I find really interesting. And I never did talk to the guy though that saw the, the female. The, the, no, the, the, no, the guy that saw them robbing the fish. Okay. I didn't talk to that guy. Oh, I okay. just corresponded with the other dude that I met through the one that ah, saw him carrying the gator. Yeah. Right. So maybe just to clarify that, so that yeah. <clears throat> the second guy, he's the one that he just caught a glimpse of him, okay. you know, and hiding in the brush, but he could make out one of them and see that it had breasts. Right. But and that they were two females, and he said that you know if he had to guess, they'd probably be about six to seven foot tall. Right. But they, they weren't probably young. overly massive. Right. Maybe maybe juveniles, you know? I and would they're, say they're juveniles. If they're females, mm -hmm. six, six and a half feet tall, they were juveniles. Younger juveniles, probably. Mm -hmm. Juvenile females. But it's really interesting that that how a lot of people think that these beings, these creatures, won't watch you do something. And then, it, for example, those trout lines or jug lines, whatever you want to call them, they'll go in there. And they'll see you put them out. They'll wait. For a while, and then you leave. If you don't come back for a day, and they'll pattern you, as they say, they'll figure out your pattern when you come by to visit. But they've, I'm, I'm fairly certain they've figured out how long they're gonna wait before they go check your line, and they make sure they check it before you do. You know, and if there's anything caught on there, they go in there and just pull the fish off. And like you said, they can do it meticulously where they're not ruining. Uh, ruining your hooks or anything like that, and they're just taking the fish. Whereas when you think about an alligator, they'll just come in there and rip it off, and you might see traces yeah. of the fish on it. That, that's what he was saying, too, that it was obvious somebody it, was taking them. Yeah, it was completely gone off there. That's, but that's really cool. I think that's one of those moments that if, you know, if I had a chance to see a Sasquatch and you know, to see two young females hiding, I'd be good with that. I wouldn't want to bother them or anything, just but I'd want to get a look at them. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. So it makes you wonder. These guys live down there 24-7, right, in the, up in a swamp. Living swamp. a completely different lifestyle than yeah. what we're used to. Yeah, and, and it makes you wonder how many people out there in that area, even till this day, have seen them or know about them. Yeah. It makes you wonder. Because that's the same thing I always wonder around here in Texas, especially East Texas. How many people out there have had an encounter? And don't say anything to anybody. You could be driving down the highway in East Texas, and you yeah. might see something on the side of the road. Exactly. That's some weird stuff out there. And yeah. it's so thickly wooded out mm -hmm. there. And that's another thing, folks, when we can't say it enough, is too many people out there don't realize how many visual sightings slash encounters people have had in East Texas. It's a lot yeah, of them. A bunch. Oh, gosh. I and, mean, you know, we're talking about Conroe. Yeah, that's even a just, yeah. Yeah. Just around Conroe, but New heck, Caney, just just even even like on west of San Antonio, that area. Yeah, even that area. There's yeah. a lot of, but was that the Air Force Base that people were seeing Kelly Air Force? Base? Yeah, around Kelly Air Force Kelly, Base. Everybody was saying that they were seeing. There's even a road outside of San Antonio, which is not even where we're talking about. This right. is that's in South Texas, but but it, it was called Bigfoot Road. 
Oh yeah, I believe it. Yeah, Bigfoot Road. So I mean, um, some people it's on might, the highway. You can see it, like you said, it says Bigfoot Road exit. Some people may, some people say or uh, or are of the opinion that it's named after Bigfoot Wallace, the Texas hero. Yeah. From so, but but it's but it's the coincidence that that it says Bigfoot area only is full of Bigfoot. Signs. Yeah, it is. It's kind of weird. On that th- on that note, I'm well. I'm guessing that. If they were going to name it after Bigfoot Wallace, wouldn't they just put Bigfoot Wallace? Mm-hmm. Because that way it would, you yeah, know, delineate. Be, why, yeah, why wouldn't you? Why just Bigfoot? It would delineate Bigfoot. Don't Wallace. make no sense. It doesn't. So maybe I think you're onto something with that one, brother. Well, it, here's another one. My my grandfather when when he when he had a cabin down on the Rio Grande, he had some friends that were Mexican uh-huh. from Mexico. And that that area right in there near Candelaria yeah. and all that, um, it, it's you it, you can go back and forth across the border, and the border patrol ain't even it, nobody it, says it's anything. It's so desolate. Yeah, back then in the eighties when I was a kid, you know, you, yeah. it was they, they were Mexicans. They lived on this side of the river. I'm sure they weren't legal, but it didn't really matter. I mean, they were just, yeah, they weren't traipsing deep into the country. nah. They were just right there making a living, and they would they would cross back and forth. And there was a little bitty bridge you could walk across right. the river. You could walk back and forth across. Uh huh. So and it wasn't like the border patrol was really police in that area. And there was a little school right there where a bunch of kids went to school, and they right. they all spoke Spanish, and they were all uh, Mexicanos, mm-hmm. and they went to the escuela. Mm-hmm. As they say the school, mm-hmm. and they were Mexicans from Mexico, but they all went to school on this side, and right. it was just like, and it was taught by a Mexican national teacher or whatever. Well, uh, I remember three of the kids that my grandfather was friends with, um, of their family, he was friends with their with their abuelito, uh, mm-hmm. you know, right, and so they they had told me stories because they could actually two of them were bilingual. They had told me that there was Bigfoot, that they that they were they would see them you know wading in the river and trying to catch fish, and that that even one day one of the Bigfoots like wandered up to the school. And these things were tall; they were big. Yeah, they said they were like seven, eight foot tall. You know, they described how tall they were and and how right. my my grandfather was a big guy, and how much bigger and taller they, it was than they were him. Than him. You know? Wow. And so, you know, th- they were describing it, you know, and I remember as a kid being captivated by this. I was probably like, you know, 10 or 11. That's nuts, Listening though. to these stories of Bigfoot, you know, and just thinking, man, that's crazy. And that they were just habituated in that area. And one night uh, there was a cabin that was probably a quarter mile down the road from my grandpa's uh, little cabin he had out there. And it was pretty cool. You know, my grandfather had a little cabin out there, and then, he, you know, they lived in Marfa. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, so I would go, and then sometimes we'd stay at the cabin, and sometimes we'd stay in town or whatever. Sometimes we'd go to Candelaria. Uh, but my grandfather had knew all these people. He knew people everywhere. And so we were out there staying, and the, the next day, I guess these Bigfoot had been angry at oh. these, <laughs> at some of, at one of the, the cabin dwellers that was about a quarter mile up the road. Right. And they had broken, uh, the windows with rocks, oh, and wow. there were big stones, like big. What the size of can, a cantaloupe? Can, I was about to yes, <laughs> I was just about to say the cantaloupe-sized stones. Holy That's weird Jesus. that you said that right when I did. That's the only thing I could think of. Out yeah, because because they were big stones, were about the size of a cantaloupe, you know, or a honeydew melon. Yeah. And I remember as a kid, I saw them, Armando. I looked at with my own eyes. I saw there were stones all around that cabin. They had just messed that cabin up really? because. Uh, somebody had taken a shot at one of them. Oh, because he was good. trying to steal a baby goat, mm. and I guess the 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 Mexicans there got didn't like it, so they mm-hmm. shot at it. Yeah, and so they came back and they they just bombarded that cabin. They tore the roof up. Dead goat. And I just remember them saying that it was from Bigfoot. Now, like I said, I never saw any of the, this. I never witnessed any of this. But you did see the stones. The aftermath. Yes. Yes. Wow. And in that area, in that canyon. Uh, was where they claimed that there were these uh, uh, coyotes, you know, the, these little uh, om- hombre coyotes. Yeah. The little, the little monitos. Yeah, the, the coyote, coyote men. men. Yeah, that they would climb around and the and they they could move like men on two legs. Right. They, you know, and people would see them running across the road. They were small, though, very diminutive looking. Um, not like a skinwalker, but like just very, you know, like a pack of little small coyotes. And they'd run oh, around my. on two legs, yeah. 
And my grandfather claimed to have seen them too, like these little coyote men, you know, and he just thought it was just like, that's just what was there. Did he ever describe how tall they were? Um, they weren't real tall. The, the head of them d- didn't come up to the hood of the truck, according to what he said, because I was were... real, I was a very inquisitive child. Right. And when I, they were I was a pest up. and I would ask lots of questions and right. he would get aggravated. And he goes, I don't know, they're about, you know, four foot, and he was putting his hand up, you know, about mm-hmm. the, the top of my, you know, truck. You know, and they'd run across the road. He goes, they just, they just coyotes that learned how to walk on two legs. That's how he explained it. That's what he said. Right. But according to one of his friends, he ran the store there in Candelaria. His name was Juan, old old guy. It was real cool. He always gave me candy and stuff. I yeah. liked him. And you uh, got your chicle, huh? Yeah, my chicle and and and, <laughs> and all the other good stuff. There the, you go. The the pan, you know. They oh yeah, a little, the pan They had a little small pal, pan dulce. They yeah. had the little bakery right there. It was yeah. pretty cool. And it was homemade stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. But anyway, he was talking about the, the 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 those were like a distinct species of whatever they were. They didn't know what they were, really? and they were thieves. They were egg thieves. They would steal the eggs, and they would kill chickens, and they were a nuisance. Wow! And that sometimes they would they would um, the Bigfoot would make like kills and things, mm-hmm. and the little coyote dudes would come and try to take them. Oh, really? Try to scavenge them. You know, right. they, they'd hang around. You know. Yeah, and and so I grew up when I was a little kid. You know, we'd be out there. I'd hear all these stories. My grandpa was always like, "Ah, it's bull crap," about the Bigfoot stuff. Right. But it was funny because, like, you know, I'd, I've said this before. He had they saw a dog man on the side of the road in Louisiana. No. My grandfather and gra- my grandfather, and my grandma, yeah. And then my grandfather admitted about the little coyotes running yes. around on two legs. Makes but he wonder. never saw the Bigfoot, so I guess he just thought, you know, it's bull. But he, he yes. also, I think he played it down because he didn't want me to be afraid. That's true. That's another angle. I mean, on that note, it makes me start to wonder, you know, are they still out there today? Could they still be there I'm today? sure they are. Why wouldn't they be? Well, it all depends on how much development's happened in Candelaria and yeah, all that there's area. There's not a lot, though. I mean, I really don't. That's on the other side of Big Ben, you know? You don't really look yeah, at There's, there's really nothing not out, out there. there. Yeah. I mean... So. Not a lot of water. Right, know? except it, for the river, and that's it, right? The river's dirty. I mean, you know, you'd have to be able to, you know, I mean, I don't know. It just, it, it's a very, it was a very desolate area yeah. in the mid 80s. I don't know how desolate it is now. Well, if it hasn't there's changed. There's people everywhere now, yeah. but I doubt that it's going to be a whole lot out there. Yeah, if it hasn't changed much since the 80s, since you were a kid out there, then yeah, I would say that there's a good chance they're still out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless the, you know, the feds came in there and ran them off. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know. Now, I got another story, um, a couple of stories. I'll go with this one. The, the, there was a guy that I used to work for at Security years ago. He was from California. And I'm talking like he came from California back like in the 80s. And right. I started working for him in the 90s. And uh, I would work. And then I got to where I was working at the club all the time. So I still worked for him, though, like two or three times a week, a month. Right. Because I wanted to keep my card active and all that, mm-hmm. and things that the, the rules and everything were different back then. I can't right. remember how it was, but the, there was a a board of private investigators, a security agency, or something right. like that. It wasn't run by the DPS back then, and I can't remember the rules. But I had to work a number of days or whatever, and so I worked for this guy for for years and years. And then when I first started my business, he kind of helped me before he retired, and he was telling me now. Doing security, I ran into all kinds of weird stuff. A lot of ghost stories. I got a ton of ghost stories from doing security. We could do show after show after show of ghosts. We're going to in the future. Okay? Oh, yes. It's coming, folks. We got some ghost stuff. We're going to talk about this church and some other stuff <laughs> oh, that happened. Oh, yeah. I'm waiting to hear that one. But... Now, here, here's what happened, though. One day, there was a water treatment plant that, w- that we were doing security for, and all the guards were like, it's haunted, it's haunted, it's haunted. And so this guy sends me out there, and... Nothing happened to me. You know, the, I, I was out there one or two two nights, I think. Right. And he goes, I don't know about all that ghost stuff. He goes, but I do believe in Bigfoot. Oh, really? Now, he lived up in Northern California near the Sierra Nevadas. Right. And he told me that he believed in Bigfoot. And at one point, he was he was working, uh, running a company or working, or a uh, business, uh, I forget what you call operations manager of a company. And it was outside of Sacramento. Like he, or he lived or outside of Sacramento. Were they log? Was it a logging? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't something? think it was logging. <clears throat> but they were they were building subdivisions right. out there or something. Right. Uh huh. And this was, I guess, oh, 
man, back in the 80s or yeah, something. Yeah, late like 70s, he, early 80s that time. Yeah, I think the mid 80s when he was out there. Okay. And so, and so he was telling me, he goes, I do believe in Bigfoot. He told me that he had several guards that had gotten run off by angry Sasquatch. Out in California? Out in California, yeah. Oh, in wow. Northern California and North, uh, Eastern California. Yeah. That's what he said. And he said that they were, they were very aggressive and, and angry because they didn't, I guess they were what he thought. And this guy's, you know, this guy's an old Marine. He told me this. He said that, that they were, you know, I, he didn't, he was a no nonsense guy. Right. You know, but he told me that they thought that they were destroying their habitat. Right. And the, that uh... these guards were having to deal with it because at night, uh, equipment and stuff was being messed with and then it and so they had the guards there so so one night this guard shows up according to the story that he was told he shows up and the other guard uh wasn't there what? and it was an 11 o'clock shift he was going to change shifts 11 to 7 right guy at 11 o'clock he shows up the guard is gone he has this he smells this horrible stench that smells like rotten eggs so he says that the guy gets out of his vehicle and goes walking around, doesn't see the guy's vehicle anywhere, doesn't see the guy, doesn't know where the guy is, you know, so he just wanders around the property and, and he keeps smelling this. And then he starts hearing something that's like paralleling him from right. the woods. Mm -hmm. And so the guy gets real nervous. So he runs and gets back in his car and Right when he gets into the car, he turns the lights on, standing right there in front of him in the pitch dark that is now illuminated, mm -hmm. is a creature with a, that was about eight foot tall with a pointy head. It's when he said he's a pointy head and that it was covered in black fur. Wow. And that it had, it was just a really big mouth with a bunch of teeth in it. Wow. And that it was roaring, growling at him. <sighs> wait, and, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Pointy teeth in this, a lot of pointy it teeth. Had, and he, he said that it had a mouthful of teeth, a pointy head. Okay. Because I thought you said pointy yeah, he teeth. He just said it had a mouthful of teeth and it was really okay. big and it was growling at him and it was snapping its jaws at him. And, and like, like, like when a person gets down and they, they flex their arms, yeah. you know? And when the guy was explaining this to me, he was showing me how the guard was telling him, you know, right. like putting its arms down toward his legs uh -huh. and, and yelling. Yeah. Like this thing was angry. It kinda was like it was, uh, it was not happy. Kind of like the when the Incredible Hulk gets angry type thing. Yeah, yeah actually, that, yeah. That, in that he, style. You know, and actually, it was, it was me and Scorpion were both working there for him at the time, and he he was showing us like how the guy, movements and everything. Yeah, the movements. And so this guy was down doing that, you know, and 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 this thing was was mad, you know. And so this guy got in his car. He didn't know where the other guard was. Oh, really? And he just backed up and just drove out. And luckily, had not. Um, the fence, there was a fence, I guess. He had not closed it behind him, so he was luckily he didn't have to deal with that, you know. So the next day he tells the guy, he says, I'm I'm done, I quit, you know, and he goes, What what the heck's going on? This was the third guard that had left. Well, the guard that he was supposed to relieve, he says, Look, the guard wasn't there. You know, and he goes, Okay, well, I still haven't gotten a hold of that guy. And he said that that guy, though he was supposed to be the missing guard. The missing so. guard, he's supposed yeah. to be relieving, never showed up ever again. Never showed up to get his check. Nothing. Holy Just smokes. got in his vehicle and left, I guess. That was it. I they mean, never heard from him again. Never heard from him. Never picked up his check. Nothing. Oh. And the other guy just quit and said, I know what I saw. And I don't give a damn. You want to believe me? You don't want to believe me? He goes, it looked like a giant gorilla, but like mixed with a man. <laughs> and that's what he told. And then, <laughs> so he says, I believe in Bigfoot, you know. Wow. And he's, I don't believe in them ghosts. I don't believe in all that. You know, he was, <laughs> you know, when people are weird, like they'll believe in, Certain, you know, things, certain but not things, but not others, you know, I, I don't know. It just, it, people were weird, you know? I can only imagine what that guy was going through as he's, you know, nonchalantly walks around, can't find the other guy. And then he, you know, he's hearing all these footsteps and it's makes him un, uncomfortable. And then he goes to the car, turns on, and you know, there turns it is, on the light. Right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he said that the eyes were yellow. That's what he That's said. Interesting. Yellow, yeah. Yeah, yellow eyes. He said that it was like a reflection of yellow and that it was just the face that he described the face uh to 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 the guy that told me yeah he said the guy the guy told him it had yellow eyes and it had big like a big ridge and like, like a protruding forehead yeah know? the big brow ridge he didn't say brow ridge he just said a big protruding forehead and, yeah and a big like really big jaw 
you know, just um, kind of ape-like mixed with human. Yeah. It, and with that being said, you know, he said he, you know, he described the amber eyes. Now, that's really well, interesting. I don't know about amber. You just said yellow. Yellow, yellow, amber. Okay. Potato, potato to me. <laughs> but uh, he described the eyes. Obviously, the eyes were enough to get his attention to where he'd key in on them. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And and just on that thought alone, it gets me to wondering about all the people that report seeing these blue-eyed Sasquatches. Um, my wife. Really? Yeah, my wife saw one that was blue. I want to get her on the show so she'll talk about it. She I think said it was a small one. Yeah. Um, well, you know, in that. When near, you, near Edwards Air Force Base in California. Oh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. But uh, with that thought, keeping that thought in mind, you have to wonder. Maybe you know, it's pure speculation on my part, but I would. I would definitely wager some money and say if you've got a Sasquatch with blue eyes, that's that's a human that's a human color. It's not out there in the animal world, unless we're talking like dogs. But so it would have a human gene. Yeah, there's a human gene sure. in there somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's really crazy though. But I'm just really I'm kind of surprised that 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 the eye color took him up, you know, caught his attention enough to where he remembered, you know, what it was. And, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't told know. Me some other stuff wow. too. Like he, he I'm, I'm going through my notes here. Mm-hmm. Um, just reminded me, he told me some other stuff too. Like that there was more than just that guard. Like after that, he sent right. another guard out there and another guard, and he felt kind of guilty because he felt like he should tell them if there's something out there. Right. And he said that one of the guards mm-hmm. got a rock thrown through the back of windshield of his car. Holy smokes! So that was like that, you know, and the guard just was like, what the freaking heck? So he left, you know, and then another guard um, saw one walk across the property while he was on foot patrol. Oh. And so it scared him enough to, you know, quit. He said he lost (laughs) four guards before they finally gave up the contract. Really? I wonder what that company did after that. <sighs> who knows? Makes and you wonder. But who I mean, knows what, what that was or where that was or whatever. I can see the Sasquatch being angry, you know, due to all that encroachment. But, yeah, that's... Yeah, I mean, and this guy, this guy said that he dealt with, like I, like I said, he that happened near Sacramento. Yeah. But this guy told me that he, before he came to Texas, he also lived in the Sierra Nevadas at one time. Oh, interesting. And so that was, because that was in the city, or near the city, whatever. Right. But th- there was another time. But even that, Sacramento yeah. wasn't that big in the 80s, not compared no, to what not it is today. No, not at all. Today. I mean, they, they were building it, you know. Yeah. But he he lived near the Sierra Nevadas at one point, and he said that he had a neighbor who claimed that he saw a Bigfoot um, literally rip up a tree. Like wow. just rip a tree up in his backyard, and so I, I know. So this guy actually he believed wholeheartedly in Bigfoot. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, that's just. Whew. But he said, "Yeah, he goes." I and I, he goes, "You would hear them like yelling and hooping." But he s- at saw night saw it and, rip that sucker up. Uh, that his neighbor. Okay, he told me that his neighbor, that when he was living in the Sierra Nevadas, right, told him. That he saw it. Oh, it was the neighbor. Seen, okay, yeah, I'm the sorry. neighbor I, had seen a God. Sasquatch rip up a tree trunk that was, you know, and and literally throw it at a storage shed. So I don't know. So so he goes. He goes. You know, when it, when somebody tells you that, you think, okay, this guy's crazy. This mm-hmm. is what the guy was telling me. Right. And he says that you know you think this guy's crazy, but then he goes, I had four guards quit on me and all tell me that they saw this thing. This thing that looked like a Sasquatch. Yeah. I would be inclined to. Give it some serious credibility when someone says, "I watched this creature rip up a tree and throw it at a, uh, you know, throw it at a uh, storage shed. storage shed." Because you know there was that video that was out uh, a while back uh, about the Sasquatch throwing the big tree, and I think there's the the another shameless plug. Thinker Thunker did a breakdown of that video where it shows what looks like a humanoid type creature chunking about a 15 to 20 foot tree oh, wow. about you know 50 to 100 yards and i mean you'd have whoopie to watch the video do, whoopie do i you do know. that all the time in my field training mm-hmm. i go out there and i do crossfit right yeah well, and, and i throw you know, well, this guy was foot th- trees this, all this, the time you know this being <laughs> this <laughs> this creature though in all seriousness was standing still and just heaved it it what do you mean amazing. all seriousness? You don't think I'm being serious when I tell you these lies? 
I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I'm not when I'm telling you I can lift a 50 foot tree. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, it's not fifty foot. It's yes. forty eight. Oh, okay. I thought it was forty eight and a half. I was just, yeah. I was just, I was just, be, I was exaggerating, <laughs> folks. <laughs> but yeah, no. But I mean, this, yeah. so, so this guy, you know, like I, if you knew the guy, like me and Scorp worked for him. My brother knew him, you know. Mm -hmm. Too. He was, he was a nice guy, but he was a very no nonsense marine. You know? So he wasn't prone to just come nah, up with BS. No, he wasn't going to make up a bunch of stuff, you know. Yeah. And so, like, but him, his firm belief in Bigfoot, he believed in it, you know. Yeah, I would too. After four guards quitting and pretty much all of them saying the same thing, and this is after the first guy saying, "I'm done. I saw this and yeah. leaving." You know, mm -hmm. yeah, I would definitely be a believer because guards, you know the deal. A guard won't quit if he's not having any issues, right? That's what I. That's the way I understand it. But well, you know, I've had guards leave because something has spooked them somewhere. Right, the right, right. But I'm saying they won't leave if there's no, no real issue, right? Mm -hmm. They'll go out there. They'll do because it's it's not tough to do uh, the the guard jobs if you're not having if you're not posted at a place that has a lot of issues. If you're posted at a quiet place, man, it's easy stuff, right? Yeah, I I know that it, there was a time, like I said before, when I was a kid, I lived way out in the country, out near Rockdale, mm -hmm. and I was I was I just took Anthony and my wife out there the other day and showed them where me and Keith Bell used to live. Yeah, um, still a friend of mine lives up in Fort Worth. Good guy, Keith. If you listen to the show, I know he likes paranormal too. But uh, we were I would ride my bike back in and my and it was a ten speed because mm -hmm. even as a kid, you know you, and so I had to get off and walk it because I couldn't ride my ten speed on the gravel right. road. Okay, yeah. And so <laughs> when I'm walking around and I heard something crashing through the brush and I could see the silhouette of something really big and large. I told this show this story on Vic show. Yes. But I couldn't make out what it was. And you know, at the time, I I'm I'm terrified. I th I'm thinking Bigfoot. I'm not thinking Dogman because at that time because I didn't know Dogman existed, but yes. until I saw it when I was 15, but I'm just walking along going like what what is that, you know? Correct. And then I hear these, the cows like all mooing and all crunched up into one area, jammed into the trees. And cows don't do that. I mean, it was no. weird. Something was there and I saw it moving. And I just remember like kind of seeing the top of a head, kind of like, you know, I could see it, you know, like, you know how your eyes begin to adjust to the darkness? Mm -hmm. And uh, I was carrying an, an album full of baseball cards. And like, <laughs> yeah, because like, I was out trading cards with my friends right. too late, and I rode my bike back into town. Which to this day, I look back on that and think, how did I do that? I used to ride my bike on the dang highway, like ridiculous. But, anyways, I just remember seeing something and thinking that it was a Sasquatch. Now I didn't see like the Sasquatch any details. I just saw this big form, and I thought that's what it was. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, it's there's so much activity around this area. Even the Austin area, I mean, I, I think that I think the Austin area, and I'm saying that in general, I think a lot more a lot active at one time. Yeah, I met this guy one time downtown. Uh, used to used to he was homeless, a really, but he was a really good guy, and he would go around and sell these little American flags and these little pins right. or whatever. And uh, he he was in a wheelchair and he was downtown, and I'd I'd give him money sometimes. He was a nice guy, but um, he had, he was a Vietnam vet, and he claimed that he, there was tons of bigfoot sightings back in the 70s and 80s around austin that they would be all over the place i've heard of a lot of uh well in, in the research and reading reports and, and well, he told me some stuff. stories about well bergstrom it, you know? austin i mean yeah, the, the bergstrom, bergstrom the bergstrom yeah around that yeah around that area yeah, it well, was all over the place uh i believe there was a bergstrom booger yeah the bergstrom it, yeah, booger yeah and so then he the guy was telling me about you know like that, that some of the areas where he had been um, the Sasquatch were habituated and that they had to literally drive them off from yeah. Lake Travis because people would see them all the time. Yeah. And the, uh, that's the same thing with Bergstrom. They'd go out there and raid the, uh, trash area. Trash. Yeah, They'd absolutely. And it's There funny. was a slaughter plant outside of Ro uh, Rockdale where I lived, where they claimed that Bigfoot were, would show up, were showing up and, and scavenging through scavenging the stuff. through it. And, yeah. you know, um, that was years ago. I could talk about that one day. That's a whole nother deal. I'll, I'll actually get into that one day. And I got uh, another uh, two or three really good Bigfoot stories, but we're out of time today. So. You know, well, I tell you what, you know, like Sasquatch is, is always that uh, that topic that we could go on and on ad, as, as D, to quote D, ad nauseum. We could go on and on because there's just so much associated with um, 
the Sasquatch that it's not even funny. And we can we can barely begin to really understand what it is they do. I mean, I wish we could understand. I have the I, I have the the I guess you could say the position. My position on the Sasquatch is is um you gotta respect them. They're beings. They have their own attitudes, they're their own people, if you for lack of better words. They're their own they have their own personalities. Yeah. So you have to treat them with that respect that they have their own personality. Some good, some bad, some even tempered, some bad bad temper, some that don't even want to be around, you know, human beings if for all uh for lack of better words. So but we can't be the type of people that are gonna is that are gonna espouse the same attitude that was espoused 150 to 200 years ago when settlers started moving west. Remember how they thought on the, in the east about the Native Americans? Do I remember? No, I was not alive at that. No, time. no, I'm talking about that's history That's a show class. for the immortals, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's true. That'd be a good one for the immortals. But I'm just saying, <laughs> in all in all fairness to I the I see what you're saying. The attitude that that back when the you know the settlers were moving west, there was this preconceived notion or this attitude that the, that the Native Americans were these complete savages that didn't know anything and unfortunately that's that looks like for a lot of people that's the way they're looking at the Sasquatch. Now, I'm not promoting that they're this friendly hug hug you know. No, because I'm I've gotten saying, way too many reports of them being by vi- yeah violent and yeah. I'm just and, I'm promoting that. Respect them and and just it, treat them with respect and and just uh, like I said, you, who wants to go poking a bear when you don't know if it's hungry or not? And just hey, but don't think that they are these these mindless creatures that don't have a no, higher form of th- thinking. They're definitely a smarter species of animal if you want to look at them as an animal. But yeah. if, if <clears throat> well, we're an animal. human level so, intelligence. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't agree. Like you have a different stance than I do about Dogman and Bigfoot. You believe that they are as smart as we are. I don't. I believe they are very. I said intelligent. human level. I didn't say smart as well, we are. The level of what? A three year old or a ten year old or how old are we talking about? Here? I'm talking around a fourteen, fifteen year old. For a dogman? Yeah. Um, because they can strategize. And and and, and yeah, I don't know about that. I, well, then why haven't they done more? Because it's real simple. If you don't, if you live in a in a can you teach a Bigfoot to do math? Mm-hmm. Quite possibly, but no one's ever done it, so we don't know. Dude, I've done it. I've You've, taught them how to rap and dance and sing. There you go. That requires a Dude, math. I got math. three of them right here. I can tell <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes. I'm just kidding. Anthony's not a Bigfoot. He's been shaved, though. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> messing with you. No, you know what, folks? It, it is up for speculation. Yes, and, it is. But, and let me tell you something, folks. We have a ton of stories. Okay, I have, I didn't even get to scratch the surface. We got four or five more. Where I could just keep going with this Bigfoot thing. Um, <clears throat> got a lot of freaking ghost stories. I got a ton of Bigfoot stories. I got alien abduction stories. I am getting, this is weird. I'm getting a lot of pterodactyl sightings. Yeah. Things like I, that. Yeah. that is so, there's like a, a flap going on, dude. Mm-hmm. I know that at some point I want to get Lon on here and talk about the Mothman thing that he was talking about in Chicago. Yes, yes. I, and and I, I want to get several other people on here and talk about all these different things. Mm-hmm. Folks, if you know of anybody who you would like for us to interview, we can try and try to get them on. Yeah, we'll see if they'll come on. We, or if you know anybody do. who's got good stories and they want to tell them stories themselves, they can come on and we'll do it We'll interview too. them, yeah. And we'll, we've got we'll, a few we'll candidates. We'll do a discussion with them. We've got a few candidates, but... You know, we, we'd like to find more people that are willing to come on, you know, be interviewed and be on the show because all this, in the end, all this is, is sharing information with you guys because better to have the information and not need it than to need it you know, and not have it. Exactly. And with that being said, folks, I think, uh, I think our time's up. Yeah. So again, remember. Das to- Wolfman 88 at gmail.com. And Wolf and Sal at gmail.com. Send us your stories. We want to hear them because guess what, folks? The more stories we get, the more we have for you, the more people out there um, can glean the information and, and, and it'll help them. And I need I need to keep getting stories. I mean, I, I got a lot of them, but I don't ever want to run out. Yeah. And I'm almost to the, to the, the, 
you know, with from the stories I had from the old stories. I'm oh yeah, almost out of those now. Out of the old stories. Yeah, now we're gonna start getting into some so of the, the newer, newer stuff. St- but I, I've been sprinkling in the newer stuff with the older stuff too because of the subjects. Yes, because the threads, like yeah, you said, the threads. The but st- I have, <clears throat> I have probably gone through at least two thirds of the old stories. Well, that's good. But I'm getting to the newer stuff now, so people that are sending me their stuff, your stuff's gonna be coming up. So, that's great and we got a ton of it we yeah. just we, we just have a ton it's been a it's been good it's been great <clears throat> outpouring of people that, that want to talk about weird stuff that's happened to them yeah and we here. here's what we got coming up i'm going to be we're going to be doing haunted objects yes cursed objects i still got to talk about that gargoyle from the key <laughs> um and, we, and then we got we got all kinds of other stories we got uh, ghost vehicles. I want to get. I want to do one on that. And then immortals. I got a really weird, yeah. trippy immortal story. It's really weird. Yeah. And we want it. We also want to do a Mandela effect. Um, you know. So guys, just just be patient. We're just trying to get through all the material and get to the stories that you want to hear. And keep the variety coming as well. And keep it. Yeah. Keep it. Keep you on your toes. Definitely. We know there's a lot of people who are not into the Mandela effect or any of the other different ones. We know a lot of people are into a certain genre, which is okay with us. We just happen to be those people that have all these, that we, we like the whole realm. Mm-hmm. We like the broad spectrum yeah, of everything because there's a lot of weird stuff out there. In some way or another, they're tied together. Oh, yeah. In some way or another, they're tied together. So with that being said, folks, thank you for being with us. Y'all have a good 